Welcome to the Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by Play Picks and the Lines. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. We got a pretty fun seven game slate here on Monday night to kick off this week. Uh, in this one, we're taking a look at some Eastern Conference battle uh, battle atop the East with the Bulls taking on the Miami Heat. Uh, some best bets and a few player props in this one. Nate does have his great article up as well on playpicks.com with some best bets and player props in there for you. And like and subscribe to that page and check out those other couple videos we have for you today, including that player props video that will look to stay very hot with you guys on this week. And as always, if you do still need a FanDuel or DraftKings account, head to fdpicks.com or dkpicks.com com and find those listings in your area and do make sure you're checking out the lines.com as we've got that odds checker up for you to make sure you're getting the best value uh, on each of the bets you're making depending on what odds makers are offering you and with that nate let's jump into the lines for tonight yeah we got the bulls right now our plus four and a half at miami it was plus three but some action creeping in on the heat and the total creeping down a little bit from 225 to 224 uh, we'll, we'll give you all angles on this game in a minute, but there were six other games to address on a Monday slate here. Wolves minus three at the Cavs. No Garland or Levert for Cleveland, so that total at 219. The Pacers are in a pick em at the Magic. Raptors minus four at Nets. Still no Kyrie Irving. Not eligible yet to play in home games for Brooklyn. Charlotte is plus 10.5 at Milwaukee with a 240 total. We will break that one down for you in a separate episode and probably address it in our player props as well. And the Spurs plus eight and a half at Memphis, another high total up at 238. And then finally, Kings minus four and a half at Thunder. That total also at 228 seems a bit high given how OKC plays. Um, But we are looking at Bulls heat. Interestingly, the Bulls have been just as efficient coming out of the break, but have not gone over, um, have not really hit that 230 mark either. They're coming off a a 116-110 loss to Memphis to snap their winning streak, which wraps around the break. Obviously, everything uh, is contingent on DeMar DeRozan for them. The Coast to Coast pod MVP, our number one player props pick, and uh, a guy who's on an historic tear coming into the break, but – didn't have his best game against Memphis and has struggled against Miami, which does makes a lot of stars struggle. Uh, but in his last seven against the Heat, averaging 21 points per game, still shooting 54% from the floor, which is excellent for DeMar. But Miami's scheme seems to have limited the way guys produce around him, you know, get letting him get his points, but not letting him break down their defense. And you can tell by the fact that, I mean, his teams have lost seven of their last eight against the Heat. That includes the Spurs. And then that he, he has a cumulative minus 49 plus minus in those games. Uh, with the combination of Jimmy Butler and P.J. Tucker on him tonight, I wouldn't expect. I mean, I'm not going to bet an under on DeMar DeRozan. Don't get me wrong. But <laughs> I, I think if he doesn't get 30, uh, the Bulls are not winning. And actually, one of those seven seven of those last eight games, the only time he got 30 against the Bulls, against the Heat, they still lost. So Miami, very tough at home, Uh, won eight of their last nine. They don't have Kyle Lowry tonight, but they do have Tyler Hero, um, who was not available the first time uh, they went to Chicago. They, They eked out a win there. And then the following time. With no DeRozan for Chicago, with no Jimmy or Bam for Miami, the Heat ground out a program win, a 26-point win over the Bulls. They've now won nine of their last 12 against Chicago. Obviously, it's a different Chicago team this year. Uh, But what I'm looking at with the Heat is just their ability to step up in in these kind of playoff benchmark um, opportunities. That They have the best record against their own conference at 25 and 12. They have the best net rating against the East. They've won five straight against that Eastern Conference. Um, The numbers also indicate that they go over a lot. They've gone over an eight of their last 10 against the East. Obviously love picking it over with the Bulls, the way they can't guard uh, on the perimeter right now. And uh, the way Miami, you know, with, with Hero out there should be able to produce on the perimeter. They're at a slight rest disadvantage here too. And they're nine and O this season to the over when they have a rest disadvantage as they play in their third game um, off the break here. Uh, so 
I mean, my preferred bet is to get the Heat here on the money line. They're not a team to to lay big money on the spread. You know, whatever that spread is at four and a half, not that intimidating. But yeah. the Bulls tend tend to play close games, so I'm looking for a way to tease it. So I get Heat money line here, um, and I I think there's different ways to play the total here because. Chicago tends to go under more on the road and they've gone under and in, in two coming out of the break. So I'll, I'll throw it to you, Josh. What do you think about the total here if we're taking the heat? Yeah, they've gone under uh, in two. I mean, that f- the first game out of the break was the Hawks at a total of 240. That game ended with a total of 220. Uh, then the Grizz, where they got spanked, really. But then, you know, because uh, Chicago's the best fourth quarter team in the league this year, uh, they were able to, to trim that, I believe, like 15 point deficit going into the fourth to about a six point loss by the time the game was over. But, you know, scoring uh, roughly 35 points in that fourth quarter to, to even get, uh, you know, all the way up to uh, the, the total that they did end at at about 226. So, I mean, if this one goes to 226, we've got an over. Um, and, and, and I'm not actually quite as scared of the over as, as you might think playing, you know, with, with Miami at home. One one pretty noticeable stat for Miami uh, at home, their offensive rating is 114. Uh, their defensive rating is 108, still very good, but actually slightly worse than than on the road for them. And their offensive rating, like I said, at 114, super, super good at home, um, which is why I, I'm not quite as uh, scared of that as well. Kyle Lowry being out does uh, impact their defense to me a bit more than their offense, as he really is the, the, the guy at the top of the, the defense to take off the head of the snake. Um, you know, they, they play at the second slowest pace at home, does Miami, Chicago. Also, not a very fast pace on the road, but I'm not really worried about the pace with these two teams because of how efficient they are on offense. We know how efficient uh, Chicago is on offense, and I just told you how good Miami is at home as well. Um, yeah, DeMar DeRozan, real quick. I mean, he's, he's scored 35 plus, what, in I believe eight of his last nine games, nine of his last 10, something like that. He hit his total in 11 games in a row, I believe, before the Memphis game. So he was going over on his props all the time. It's not like we were uh, coming out of nowhere picking these things. They still hadn't figured out how to put his props correctly um 29 and a half tonight yeah like you said i'm still not gonna to, to bet on demar taking an uh not scoring 30 points i'd much rather bet on him scoring over but uh that heat defense i mean there's a couple guys that they lock up we've we've, we've hit the under with trey a bunch of times this season trey young playing against the heat same concept um, but demar's a little bit different i think he will be able to get to his spots a little bit more still not enough to your point i i do feel pretty good um about both the over and the heat winning this game uh and, and the four points doesn't scare me quite as much you mentioned how well both these teams play against the the conference that they're in and you know Miami is 25 and 12 to the spread uh you know outscoring the spread by about 2.1 uh, points per game uh in, in these situations where they're uh they're playing against the Eastern Conference Chicago 24 and 13 as well slightly worse you know plus minus against the spread uh they're barely covering it but at the same time you know uh, this is a, a team in Chicago who um honestly the difference between them being you know a top three team in the east and them being uh, uh four anywhere from five to eight uh five to seven let's say is really how good their defense is with Caruso and Ball and how bad it is without it uh, they need Caruso and Ball to be contenders to, to take on a team like Miami in the playoffs and in, in, in a series uh, as well as you know obviously the other top teams in the east um, and, and I do expect a bit of regression from them I, I, I actually bet on them to win their division just because they were up two and a half games uh, you know coming out of the break on Milwaukee who has an incredibly hard strength of schedule the rest of the way uh, and I was kind of betting on, on on Milwaukee taking a bit of a dip as well before I was betting on on Chicago being able to really, you know, come out and who also has, I believe, the second strongest strength of schedule for the second half of the season. So it's not going to get any easier for them. Uh, and, and really, this matchup for them hasn't been, uh, you know, hasn't really been successful as of late. As we know, the Heat have covered in four of their last five against the Bulls uh, and, and at home. They've you know, won a couple in a row, as we mentioned. So uh, Vooch is another guy who you look at who would probably have to have another big game. He's the third guy for them that if he's not stepping up and, and, and getting those double doubles, um, then, you know, you, you don't feel quite as good. You kind of it's, it's interesting what his number are in their wins versus losses he's much much more efficient in their wins obviously is Vooch um, super crucial to what they do as he's there he's their low post presence at this point with so many injuries to the front court for the Bulls on the season obviously as well as the back court at this point but um, I, yeah I think Bam is a guy that you target tonight having a good game I think once again you know but Hero's questionable uh, and Kyle Lowry's out tonight so you know
you know, I think it's, it is also going to be somebody at the top of the key, as we know, without Caruso and Ball, the, 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 where, the way that you score against the Bulls is from the perimeter uh, and really, you know, having your guards penetrate and do what they want. So it could be another Jimmy Butler game just based on the fact that there aren't really any other ball handlers uh, and guys to, to run the offense for the Bulls. I think you'll see a really high usage rate from him. Um, so you can really attack both he and Bam tonight uh, and feel pretty good about that. But to answer your question from a minute ago, yeah, the over is definitely the way that I lean on this one um, with the, the points being scored in Miami as of late and both these teams, you know, being able to get into that, you know, 225 to 230 uh, mark very, very well tonight. Yeah, I, but I feel great about the Heat winning. You mentioned both Jimmy and Bam. When those guys are active, they're 18 and six at home this season. Uh, and only two losses against the Eastern Conference, against the Celtics all the way back in November and the Raptors kind of recently. Two teams that give the Heat problems uh, for various reasons because of their slashers, because of their ability to get to the rim. Sh- uh, Chicago's actually dead last in percentage of paint points and percentage of points off three <laughs> recently, which is amazing that they're, of course, leading the league in mid-range points, but not really getting much else except getting to the free throw line and yeah. getting DeMar going for mid-range. So I think there will be some lulls there for Chicago scoring. It's why I lean more towards Miami winning this game. They can win in a lot of different fashions. We've seen them go way under. We've seen them go over at times. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't think the over is a, is a more confident bet. The more I think about it, I, that recent game with the Hornets that the Heat won um, – and went to double overtime and still went under. Still went um, under yeah. I think we could be looking at that kind of situation where it's just winning with defense with those two guys out there. Uh, you mentioned, yeah, Vooch has to have a good game for the Bulls. Well, he's going up against Bam. DeRozan has to go up against Butler. Uh, so I and like the, the, the Heat to win defensively here. I would just look at a way to tease it maybe with another game tonight uh, mm-hmm. if you want to get the Heat down to more of a pick em. Yeah, no, I mean, I can understand the logic. I mean, some of those games you're talking about are on the road uh, for the Heat, right? That Hornets game is on the road as well, where uh, for some reason the Hornets are now going under all the time. Um, But yeah, I think, you know, either way, we do both feel confident about the Heat. I mean, everything we're saying here does lean uh, towards the Heat stopping the Bull, what the Bulls do as the way for them to win just as much as anything. I mean, the other thing is, uh, you know, the Bulls don't have anybody to stop what uh, the Heat are doing. But to your point, when you've got the combination of Jimmy and you can also throw uh, PJ Tucker in there on Demar. I mean, shoot, you could throw Bam on Demar if you want. If, if Vooch isn't in the game, and still feel pretty good about it. So, I, yeah, there's there's a lot going on there for the Heat to where the the the, the more comfortable bet for tonight is for them to at the very least win this game, if not cover. As I mentioned, they're covering by more than two points against the spread against the Eastern Conference this season, uh, and at home that number is actually even a little bit better for the Heat. So, um, yeah, I mean they're they're the number one seed right now for a reason, and I think that they're uh, they're going to continue to try and, and solidify that point uh, and earn some respect against a team that you know is chasing them for that number one seed tonight so i think they've got plenty of motivation uh to pull this one off and that is all the time we have for you in this one make sure you are liked and subscribed to that page and check out those other couple videos we've got for you tonight on this seven game slate and until we see you next happy betting